If you saw this game, well, let's just say his hair was like that when the game started and it was completely flat when it was over. That should give you an idea on how things went for one team. Southeast versus Lusk in the 1A state championship game. First quarter, Lusk wearing the red. They give the ball to Grady Penfield, who's working his way into the red zone. But as he got tackled, the senior got relieved of his duties. Garrett Bartell will recover the fumble and get a short return, although his teammates could not do anything with the turnover. On the next possession for Southeast, here comes Zach Eisenbarth. And the only question I have is, where's this guy been all season? He went right through the defense like a hot knife in butter. 53 yards to the promised land, PAT no good, so the Cyclones were up 6-0 after the first 12 minutes. Second quarter, the undefeated Tigers were lined up to punt, but they had no plans to do such. Matthew Vandebosch finds Penfield wide open on the near sideline. This play ended up being a 30-yard pickup down to the enemy 10-yard line, and the drive would continue. The only thing Lusk had going for them was that they were four for four on fourth down conversions, and here comes another one. Penfield's gonna finish the job and get around the line for a four yard score. Conversion no good, so this game is knotted up at six points apiece. But last year's state runner ups did not take long to respond. There goes Eisenbarth again. Not sure if anyone touched him or not, but he's got reservations for six on this 36 yard run. He had 186 yards rushing in this game and Southeast is back on top 14 to six. Later, the Tigers were lined up to punt again, and this time they would kick it, and that may not have been a good idea. Jeff Burrows, he was the freshman that saved the win at Cokeville in the semifinals. He'll slip about five tackles initially, then head over to the near sideline where he's got plenty of room to run. This would have been a 60-yard punt return for a touchdown if someone had not been holding during the run back. This play counts for nothing, but it was still good to show. So the Cyclones had to do it the hard way, Bartell has taken the snaps. He's throwing over the middle into double coverage, and this pass will be intercepted by Hunter Dockery, but his team was unable to cash in on the turnover. Lusk went three and out and had to give the ball back. A good punt return would enable Southeast to set up shop with a short field with less than one minute to go before the break. It was hard to tell, but the refs said that Bartell was able to get the ball over the plane of the goal line from one yard out, and that would give his team a 20-6 edge going into the locker room. Third quarter, the Tigers would onside the kickoff and recover, but this possession did not last long. In fact, it only lasted one play. Bartell makes up for his earlier turnover by getting one of his own, and the boys from Yoder would get to work again. The Cyclones would put together a 12-play, 66-yard drive, and here's their other 100-yard rusher, Wyatt Sompson. He finds the lane, and he has a mostly clear path on a 17-yard touchdown run. He had 148 yards rushing himself, as his team was taking control of this game and this rivalry up 26 to six. And here comes more, Eisenbarth again, an easy two yard run. This game was supposed to be a battle of the top two defenses in the state class 1A, just like in their regular season matchup two months ago. Guess which D did not show up. Southeast led 33 to six at this point. On the first play after the kickoff, it got worse for Lusk as they just could not get anything going. They only had 162 yards of offense compared to the opposition's 387, and this pass went in the wrong direction. Josh Kirchheffer has an easy pick, and it was looking promising for Southeast as they were still up 33-6 going into the final 12 minutes. Fourth quarter, the Cyclones would put the nail in the coffin early. They only needed two plays, and Eisenbarth is headed towards touchdown number four on this 45-yard scamper. For all intents and purposes, this game was over. The Southeast Cyclones, a team that was just one loss away from not even making the playoffs, would get their act together late in the season and get a double dose of revenge by bumping off last year's champs, Cokeville, in the semifinals and then give their arch rivals their only loss of the season. Final score in this game, 40 to six. Coach Mark Bullington's bunch finishes the season with a record of seven and three.